So with that, I don't want to take up too much space. Um, I will give um, a a space for our first speaker, um, Ms. Sarah Almadi, who is um, the program officer at UNICEF, and her bio will be shared um, in the chat as, as Sarah gives her remarks. Over to you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up in person and also in virtually, uh, virtually. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers and my fellow speakers for, for coming in here and to, to really discuss this important discussion about youth engagement in quality education. Uh, the COVID pandemic has had a profound impact on children and youth and young people, education, and well-being. 825 million school children in low and middle income countries were not on track to acquire minimum secondary education by 2030. The pandemic has further aggregated the learning and skill crisis. More than 136 million secondary level students were unable to access remote learning, including the most marginalized children in humanitarian settings and those affected by forced displacement, creating even more obstacles for adolescents to develop crucial skills for life. The World Bank estimates that there will be 17 trillion. This is more than China's GDP. Just let that sink in. In lost earnings for the current cohort of young people if this learning loss is not being addressed. But if we look beyond the challenges and toward solutions, it is young people who are at the center of change. They are already creating and transforming their community and giving their true nature for being innovators and creators. They must be front and center when it comes to transforming education. Across the globe, this is happening. Young people are giving their perspective and ideas to create new solutions and collaboration and discussion. I'll share a few examples from our country offices. For instance, in India, UNICEF ran a social media campaign depicting positive actions taken by adolescent girls during the pandemic through creative illustration based on case studies documented by UNICEF field offices and various projects like Smart Batayan, that's the name of the project. UNICEF captured positive stories of girls facilitating access to phones from remote learning, challenging gender-based violence, manage their mental health, and preventing child marriages and their villages. In Jordan, the social innovation program trained over 7,000 young people, empowered by building, developing their transformable entrepreneurial skills, and they, and they designed, planned, implemented 619 ventures which allowed them to contribute socially, civically, economically in their communities. In Turkey, during the pandemic, UNICEF have continued to implement youth-empowered skills development and peer-to-peer -peer monitoring activities through community-based child protection with our partners as well. We have been playing a central role with UNESCO and partners to ensure young people's voices are central to upcoming Transforming Education Summit. And there is a lot of underway prior to the TES pre-summit where there will be a youth forum and several ways to, to bring together young people. We would like to take this opportunity to invite you all to join us on a plenary event called Right to be Heard, Positioning Young People at the Center of Transforming Education. But this this link this will be this will be held in in Paris on the 28th of June, uh, and there will be a youth declaration coming up leading up to the pre summit. Uh, and with that, I thank you all. Um, this thank you, Sarah. Thank you for sharing about the event um, and also some of these. Sorry.